Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Bernicle. I'm the medical director of the Joint Replacement Center at Greenville Hospital Systems. I'm also the co-director of the Total Joint Institute at Stedman Hawkins Clinics of the Carolinas. I'd like to give you some information today regarding Birmingham hip resurfacing. Birmingham hip resurfacing originated in Birmingham, England and has been utilized for approximately 10 years. In the last two years, Birmingham hip resurfacing uh, was FDA approved for use in the United States. Approximately 60,000 Birmingham hip resurfacings have been, been done worldwide to date. The aim of the Birmingham hip resurfacing is to replace out the worn and painful head or ball of the femur and also to replace the acetabulum or socket both of these are resurfaced with man-made devices. On the femoral ball side, a metal cap is placed over a portion of your own femoral head or ball. On the acetabular or socket side, a new metal surface is placed over your worn-out cartilage. Both these devices are made out of metal. On the ball side, it is fixed to your bone using cement. On the acetabular side, it relies on your own bone to grow into the implant for long-term stability. Let's look at the hip joint first. The hip joint is composed of a ball and socket joint. The femoral head or ball is on the top of the femur or thigh bone and the acetabulum, which is part of the pelvis, is the socket. These surfaces are both covered by articular cartilage, which is a specialized lining which allows for smooth, pain-free motion of the joint. Damage to this lining results in arthritis. Why is it that a hip joint becomes painful? Usually the pain occurs when one side of the hip joint has been injured or damaged. Over time, the cartilage or smooth covering on the ends of the bone starts to crack and wear away. When this happens, the bones making up the joint rub together and this is what causes the pain. No matter what age you are, a hip problem may keep you from activities that you really enjoy and can even cause pain at rest and prevent patients from sleeping. As time goes by, normal wear and tear can add up. The cartilage may begin to wear away, similar to the tread on your tires. As cartilage wears, the joint space narrows and the bones start to rub together. The bones become rough, spurs or osteophytes may form, as well as degenerative cysts on both sides of the joint. There also is a group of conditions where the lining of the joint becomes inflamed and secretes a material that destroys the joint cartilage. One example of this is rheumatoid arthritis. In these conditions, more than one joint is usually affected. The joints can be hot, swollen, and painful, and many times de deformities can occur. Another process that can cause hip pain is avascular necrosis. This is a process where the ball portion of the hip joint loses its blood supply and may cause it to deteriorate. This can occur at any age, and certain conditions, such as excessive alcohol use, the use of steroids, or a traumatic injury, such as a fracture to the hip, can cause this condition to occur. Once the bone dies, it becomes rough and arthritic. Unfortunately, this can happen to young adults. How is the diagnosis of hip arthritis made? The diagnosis of hip arthritis is made based on your history, your physical examination, and probably most importantly, x-rays of your hip joint. There are no blood tests to diagnose osteoarthritis or wear and tear arthritis of the hip, unlike rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory arthritis. When should you consider surgery on your arthritic hip? Well, x-rays will first determine the severity of the arthritis in your hip joint. If your arthritis is severe, your surgery is determined by your level of pain, and the impact that the pain is having on your lifestyle. What are the benefits of this procedure? You do not have to live with a painful hip 
that restricts your activities for the rest of your life. After Birmingham hip resurfacing, you can look forward to moving more easily and returning to those high demand activities that you couldn't do previously. In preparation for your hip surgery, your orthopedic surgeon will usually have you undergo a good general physical examination by your internal medicine physician. This is to make sure that all of your underlying medical conditions are under control and you're in the best condition possible to undergo this procedure safely. The medical evaluation may include a physical, blood tests, an EKG, which is also called a heart tracing, urine tests, and potentially a nose culture to make sure that your body is not carrying any strong resistant organisms that could increase your risk of infection. In addition, our Total Joint Center offers an education class given by the nurses and physical therapists to give you detailed information and answer any questions that you may have about your upcoming surgery. An education booklet with illustrations is also provided. Finally, you will need to visit the hospital admissions department prior to surgery to register and meet with the anesthesiologist. Other important things to do before surgery include stopping aspirin and anti-inflammatory medications 10 days prior to the surgery as they may increase your risk of bleeding. Stop any naturopathic or herbal medications 10 days prior to surgery, again, because they may increase your risk of bleeding. Continue with all other medications unless otherwise specified. Please notify your surgeon if you develop any abrasions, pimples, redness, or swelling around your hip joint. It is also advisable to stop smoking for as long as possible prior to your surgery. What's involved with this procedure? The anesthesiologist will see you before the surgery. They will discuss with you the options for anesthesia. Generally, we recommend a spinal anesthetic, which essentially numbs you from the waist down. This is the safest type of anesthesia to have during the Birmingham hip resurfacing. You will be given several medications to reduce your pain after surgery. Then you will be taken to the operating theater. After anesthesia, a urinary catheter is placed in your bladder to measure your fluid balance during and after surgery. A cut is made in the skin and underlying tissue to expose the hip. We use minimally invasive techniques whenever possible. The hip joint is then dislocated and the ball of your hip is preserved. We size the ball to determine which implants will be utilized. Special instruments are then used to make very accurate cuts in the bone to fit the prosthesis. Trial implants are put in first to make sure everything fits properly. The bone is then cleaned of debris and the real implants or components are inserted. The wound is then carefully closed in layers, the last layer being the skin. A compressive dressing is applied and you are taken to the recovery room. What can I expect postoperatively? You will have a sterile dressing on your hip. You also have an ice pad applied to it. Your fluid input and output is measured carefully you will have a drip in your arm, which will be used to give you fluid as well as pain medicine and antibiotics to decrease your risk of infection. Pain is normal after the operation, but if your pain is not relieved by the medications, it's very important that you notify your nurse. Pain medication may be given by mouth or may be delivered intravenously into your bloodstream. The catheter is usually moved, removed from your bladder at approximately 24 hours after surgery. Blood will be taken 24 and 48 hours after the operation to check your hemoglobin level as well as your blood chemicals. Your exercise regimen will begin the day of surgery and will continue during your stay in the hospital as well as at home. A physical therapist will supervise this during your stay at the hospital as well as at home. You will generally be discharged one to three days after the surgery. In most cases, you will, you will be able to go directly home from the hospital. Some patients, however, are discharged to a rehabilitation center for some continued therapy to gain further independence prior to going home. 
a physical therapist will assist you at home for several weeks. You may also have one to two visits by a home health nurse to check your incision and to make sure that you are doing fine. The sutures are usually the dissolving type, but occasionally stitches or staples will need to be removed from the skin. This will be done either by your physician or by a visiting nurse. What are your activities restrictions after the Birmingham hip resurfacing surgery? Initially, you should avoid pounding activities such as running or jogging. This is generally for four to six months after your surgery. You may progress with normal activities of daily living as tolerated. Walking is good, as is riding a stationary bike. Swimming in the pool is permissible once the incision is completely healed. You may return to full activities per your surgeon's direction. Generally, running, jumping, high impact activities six months to 12 months after your surgery. Contact sports are allowed, but generally after 12 months. Of course, patients will frequently ask, how long is my Birmingham hip resurfacing going to last? Well, we now have 10 year results on Birmingham hip resurfacing. Uh, if we look at these results, only about one and a half percent of Birmingham hip resurfacings have failed in 10 years. And of course, this procedure is being done in very young, active patients. So overall, the Birmingham hip resurfacing results are far superior to those of total hip replacement in 10 years. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any further questions, please ask your surgeon.